Art is a living thing within the semi-biographical world of Ms. Hakusai. Artists speak of it as a real person or object with agency within the world. In the first sequence of the film, famous Japanese painter Hakusai, known as Tetsuzo, is commissioned to paint a dragon, which is ruined before he finishes his signature. When confronted by the buyer about his attitude, he expresses his lack of interest in redrawing the beast, saying, it has flown away. Later in the conversation, Oi, Tetsuzo's daughter, tries to reassure the buyer by saying the dragon may come back, knowing full well that she'll take over for her father. As Oi paints the dragon, a storm falls over Edo, with dangerous winds and ominous dark clouds accompanying it. We soon see an actual dragon start to appear within the storm, seemingly coming for Oi as she attempts to depict the mythical creature. Before it reaches the house, the film cuts to the next day, where a gust of wind bursts through the doors, and the dragon lays on the canvas, depicted in its full glory. The seemingly dangerous task of painting a dragon is described as a balance between painting how one feels and how a dragon is supposed to actually look. It's a daunting task, where thinking about it too much is just as bad as relying too much on freehand. Both techniques have an equal chance of ruining the entire piece, and one needs to find balance in their approach. The search for balance is the thematic conflict of Misakusai, which follows the day-to-day -day life of Oi as she tries to deal with her father, family, and her aspirations to be an artist. The plot of the film is told in individual vignettes which only connect to each other through characters and theme, yet the experience of watching Ms. Hakusai is a relaxing one, with beautiful animation and endearing characters pulling the viewer along. Despite the lack of story details, Ms. Hakusai still has something to say about the nature of art and the struggles of being an artist. Almost every character, with few exceptions, is either an artist or an admirer, and their lives revolve entirely around their craft. They are all critical of their art, critical of other people's art, and strive to become the greatest at what they do. Yet none of them realize their individual shortcomings all come from a lack of balance in their life. For example, Zinjiro is a drunk womanizer who appears to do art simply for the hell of it, yet he somehow ends up living with the Hakusais. He was originally a samurai, but decided to become a painter instead for no real reason. His focus on the simple pleasures in life seemed to stifle his artistic aspirations, explaining why so many are awfully critical of his work. In this video, I want to highlight specifically Oi and Tetsuzo's shortcomings as artists, and how this stems from their inability to balance their passion for art with their need for life. In Oi's case, her lack of diverse experiences seems to hurt her artistic ability. She tries to depict aspects of life on canvas, but they lack emotion and feel lifeless. For Tetsuzo, he focuses so much on painting and improving his craft that he ignores his family, including his blind, sickly daughter, Onao. Early in the film, we see that Tetsuzo has a strained relationship with his divorced wife and his two main daughters. Oi begrudgingly lives with him to practice her painting. They don't treat each other as father and daughter. It feels more like a master-pupil relationship overall. There is also Onao, who is in the care of what appears to be a shrine for her illness and blindness. He only sees her once in the entire movie, and while it's one of the more heartfelt moments, it shows just how distant they are from each other. Tetsuzo on multiple occasions claims that he is afraid of sickness, explaining why he seemingly wants nothing to do with Onao. Yet I'm not sure he fears Onao or sickness specifically. It seems more that he doesn't understand how to deal with having a family. At one point, we are shown a flashback where Tetsuzo is watching over a young Oi, who is asking him to play with her in the snow. Instead of putting down his work and spending time with his daughter, he instead yells at her, ultimately forcing her to paint with him, dragging Oi into his interests instead of learning hers. I think the issue stems from Tetsuzo being too focused on his art. On multiple occasions throughout Ms. Hakusai, Tetsuzo is able to fix paintings that are unbalanced enough to harm people, and he even gives advice on painting that many seem to take honestly. His status certainly makes him an authority on art, but it also allows him to remain comfortable in his life, not forcing him to deal with things outside of the art scene in Edo. Because of this, he simply refuses to handle the issues within his family, and instead forces them to play by his rules. It's so bad, in fact, that Onao doesn't even want to see him in fear that it will inconvenience him. Yet, when he does finally go to see Onao, it drives him to create a painting designed to ward off sickness, despite not being superstitious. He realizes he cares enough to try and help in the only way he knows how, and that's by creating art. In Oi's case, her unbalance doesn't mean that she's a bad artist, only a young one. She's constantly commended for her talent, specifically in drawing women in erotic art. Yet she finds criticism when it comes to how she draws men, or more specifically the lack of sensuality present in the painting. Tetsuzo attributes this fault to her naivete, heavily implying that she's a virgin. It's something she deals with throughout the film, 
trying to catch the eye of a fellow painter she has a crush on and going so far as to try and gain this experience by going to a brothel. Oe also finds issue in creating balance in her artwork. This is seen in her painting of Hell, which is so horrific that it terrorizes a woman by giving her visions of demons invading her home. While Oe never manages to find balance within her life, she is able to fix the demon painting with help from Tetsuzo. He notices the painting's grisly depiction of the tortures of Hell and decides to add a scene of people praying to a statue of a god. He describes Ai in this depiction as not leaving loose ends, which I interpret as finding balance in the most hopeless of situations. Oe's inability to create balance in her erotica and her art in general seems to reflect her inability to balance her work with her human need for life. Ironically, the only time Oe dedicates herself to experiencing life is with her little sister. Oe takes Oe now to places around Edo so that she can feel and be around things she normally wouldn't be able to due to her blindness and illness. They go to a bridge for the smells and the sounds, they walk in the snow as Oe describes beautiful landscape. In general, she pushes Oe now to new heights, yet she can't even do this for herself. By the time the film ends and Oe now has tragically died, Oe creates her most vivid and beautiful painting by depicting her little sister and enjoying a spring day. It's something she has the most life experience with, therefore leading to her best depiction of life. If art has agency within the world depicted in Miss Hakusai, then it makes sense that the best paintings come from what the artist is most familiar with. Oe can draw women with perfect detail, and her drawing of Onao has a fondness and warmth not seen anywhere else in the film. With this in mind, the film's conceit that one must find balance in their life becomes more important. Art that can accurately depict life is championed by the world. If its beauty or sensuality or even horror can resonate with someone, then the art is worthy of praise. Yet, it has to find a balance between the positive and the negatives, yin and yang. The painting of hell had no hope, therefore it left the buyer with a feeling of hopelessness that nearly killed her. Oe had no experience with sex or an attraction to men, leading to her erotica feeling empty, lacking a sense of emotion. Without great art, there is no reason to live for the main characters in Misakusai. Yet they must also face the fact that they can't produce great art without living life first. As much as Oe and Tetsuzo want to stay indoors and focus entirely on their craft, they can never become the great artists they want to be without trying new things or experiencing something that scares them. This universal struggle is what makes the technique of painting a dragon so effective at describing life. If one is to think about life and their purpose too much, it can ruin them and their relationships. Yet, if one tries too hard to be a free spirit, they may never have their relationships to ruin in the first place. Life is about finding that balance, which makes it odd that the characters find no real resolution to this issue. In the final moments of the film, where we are given short descriptions of how the Hakusais live the rest of their days, both seem to constantly strive for greatness but never achieve it in their own opinions. Tetsuzo dies thinking he would have become a great artist if he had lived five more years, while Oe gets married, moves back with Tetsuzo, then just leaves town and no one hears from her ever again. While the Hakusais may have never accomplished this balance, they were at least able to lead others to find what's missing in their lives and inspire with their talent, leading to the film ending on a shot of modern day Tokyo and showing that the contributions these artists have made have led to the great society that we have now.